Nacion. Soup Nacion. That's how you say it, right? Nacion. Nacion. Hola, Tub Nacion. That's nation in Spanish. I'm trying to get on my Spanish vibe right now because I'm going to Peru next week <laughs> with Christelle and her family, familia. <laughs> But yeah, I'm on my Spanish shit. How do I say that in Spanish? <laughs> I'm on my Spanish shit in Spanish, I Google. Estoy en mi mierda española. Estoy en mi mierda española. Period. Periodo. Periodo. Okay, but anyway, hey Tube Nation. How we feeling? How we doing? <laughs> I'm wearing this One Direction shirt, but because of the angle, it just looks like it's Liam and Louie. And they just started their own band. Maybe they're DJs now. And it's just called Direction. Which is funny because they had the most beef in the band. So them like becoming DJs would be actually so iconic. Hey guys, you should do that. Become a DJ group like the Chainsmokers and just call it Direction. That would be so sick. <laughs> Nah, but like, this is the full shirt. I love this shirt. I'm gonna be talking about my trip to Oregon and it was an absolute disaster. Just so many things went buck wild and out of control. And I was gonna film this in my car because that's like my vibe these days. I just like filming in my car, but I don't have a car right now. I don't have a car, no means of transportation. And I will tell you why. It's a shit show. But before we get into that, we do have a sponsor, so take it away, Sarah. All right, team. I'm excited to talk to you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? And if you guys continue to watch my video, you'll know that I do. I have multiple, and they all happened all at once. Regardless if you have a mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human being that experiences a lot of inconveniences on the daily, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a completely different way. Therapy is just such an awesome tool to like help clear your mind and get to the deep rooted issues of what's going on. I like to describe my thoughts like a ball of yarn just everywhere. And every single piece of yarn is just a different color. And therapy for me helps me like pluck out each color of yarn and just untangle my thoughts, untangle everything. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is a very important mission because finding a therapist can be very challenging, especially when you're limited to options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that just makes finding a therapist so much easier because it's online, it's remote, and all you gotta do is just fill out a few questions and BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's super easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. And because finding a therapist is really hard. Like, it's kind of like dating. You got to like switch them out. If you're not really vibing with your therapist on BetterHelp, which is really common, you can easily switch to a new therapist with no additional cost without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. And if you scroll down, there's a little link in my description if you want to get started or visit betterhelp.com slash And if you click that link, you're not only supporting this channel, but you also get Get 10% off of your first month at BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel, and let's get into the video. Okay, let's get into it. So there's my dragon from Idlewild. I love her. I haven't named her yet. What's dragon in Spanish? What? Continuar. Continuar? I feel like that's not correct. What's beast in Spanish? <laughs> beast. Oh, I typed in breast. Wait, actually, what is breast in Spanish? Mama. <laughs> mama. Mama. Honestly, her new name is Mama. That's Mama. Breast. Her name is breast in Spanish. Mama. Mama. Look at her. She's a little scary, but she's misunderstood, okay? The red eyes, you know, she's just mad. It's really hard being a woman, especially a dragon woman. That's why she's mad. They're siblings, okay? <laughs> They're very different. Moosley's just like very privileged. Moosley's just kind of ignorant, okay? But he's cute and he's really trying to understand all her anger. You know, she just has a lot of pent up aggression. She has a lot of walls built up. We still love her. I feel like I adopted her as a teenager. So she just has a lot of teenage rage. This is just a phase. 
But even if it's not a phase, we still love her, okay? Okay, so anyway, holy shit, my organ trip. I don't even know where to begin. There's just like so much to cover. This video might be like an hour long, but who cares? So basically, if you don't know, which you should know, you would only not know this if you haven't been watching me for a long time, but I'm from Oregon. And it was my bestie Katie's birthday, and I just really needed to be there for her birthday this year. And also I did miss my parents. I wanted to see my parents too. But usually when I go to Oregon, I always fly. It's not a long flight. But this was the first time <laughs> in my spirit where I was like, I really want to drive there this time. I want to go on a road trip. And I love a good road trip. You guys know that about me. It's only like 12 hours, but I can stop in San Francisco, stay the night there, and then just drive the rest the next day. So that's exactly what I did. I get to San Fran and I get to my Airbnb. I'm just like looking for the address on all these houses and I'm close. And then I pull up to the house. I notice that the front door is wide open kind of sketchy. <laughs> and in the front yard, there are children bicycles and tricycles and scooters, not even like neatly placed anywhere. They were just on the ground face down. And like kid toys just like scattered out around the front yard with the front door open. And I was like, this is it. Is someone just here? Like, did they actually double book me? Like, this is kind of scary. So as I'm on my phone in my car still parked, looking at the instructions on how to check in, I just hear the door slam. And I look over and the front door slammed because they like saw me pull up. And I was like, I'm scared. But then I was like, let me just like keep reading. And then it said in the check-in, hey, so this is what the front of the house looks like. And it was literally that house. And I was like, okay, I'm here. And then it was like, but that's not like where you're staying. There's like a little gate on the left side of the house. Do you see that white gate? And then there was a picture of the white gate in my phone. And I like look and I'm like, okay, yeah, I see it. And they're like, so you're gonna like go through that left gate. And then there's gonna be stairs going down. Just go down those stairs you're gonna see a door and you're gonna be staying in that basement. So I was like, oh, okay. So like there's just an entire family staying above me. I go down the little steps and then I go into the basement or whatever this is. And dude, it's really awesome. It's like a huge studio like apartment, one giant room, but I had a kitchen, I had a little family room and I had a big ass bed. There was like these sliding glass doors with a beautiful view of the ocean. Oh my God, it was so nice. And then I just like sat outside and watched the ocean for a few hours and just contemplated life and listened to music. It was awesome. And I was like, wow, Sarah, this was such a great idea. I am so happy that you drove this time and you just didn't take a flight. You're appreciating every little moment. I was soaking it in. If this is the start of my journey, like what can get better than this, right? And I'm laying in bed, it's about 1 a.m. So at one point I had to put my AirPods in, like the noise cancellation ones, cause I'm like, I, these kids are just giggling up a storm. And I honestly have FOMO. It felt really weird. <laughs> Honestly, to be in the basement of this family's house, knowing that they're all just like giggling and having fun up there, just right up there, and I just like cannot be involved. I'm just in their basement like a creep. I felt so creepy. I was like, do these kids know that these strangers just like come and go in the basement? I don't know. And like, yeah, would I appreciate an invite to like go hang up there with them? Sure. Not with just the kids, but like if the family was there, you know what I'm saying? That's weird. Yeah, I was a little jealous. I was a little jealous. I wake up, pack my stuff, get in my car. I'm on such a positive vibe. This was like a perfect pit stop. And I'm so excited to go to Oregon and celebrate Katie's birthday. I'm about to have the best six hour drive, okay? <laughs> I am driving, no care in the world. I got my music blasted. I am singing along to my favorite songs. Live in La Vida Loca, baby. I'm really soaking in the scenery. It's just a great vibe on my end, right? So now I'm two and a half hours into my drive. I have about two and a half hours left. And I'm in the middle of nowhere right now, okay? This is the part of the drive where there's no town in sight. It's just me and the highway. Love you. And I'm driving down the highway with a smile on my face. And then all of a sudden, I just hear 
the loudest bang I have ever heard in my life. Out of nowhere, like an explosion of some sort. I jumped out of my seat. I seriously thought that I was about to like swerve off the road because the bang was so loud in my ears. But luckily like I like ripped onto my steering wheel and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And my first thought in my head was someone just shot at me. That's the only thing that I could think of. That was my only explanation because the sound was so loud in my ears and there's so many cars driving by me on this highway. My hands were shaking on the steering wheel and I was so scared. I was like, either someone just shot at me or something in my car just exploded and my car is like about to go down. And my face got all red and hot. I was like, I have to pull over. Oh my God, oh my God. But there was nowhere to really pull over because there was no exits. So I was like, oh my God, I have to pull over on the side of this highway, but this is so sketchy. Like there's so many semis and like cars just going by. Like I don't even know if my car is like safe to drive. Like what the fuck was that noise? Holy shit, y'all. I'm like getting sweaty just thinking about this. As I was going through all of these like mental processes in my brain of like, what the fuck was that? I feel something graze my face. What the fuck is falling on my face right now? I look up. My sunroof exploded. My sunroof exploded. I was kidding. And there were shards of shattered glass falling onto my skin. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? In my car, obviously there's my sunroof and then there's like a little screen over it, like a fabric screen. And that was closed, but there's like little dents on the side, like where you pull it. So there's like a little opening and that's where the shattered glass was falling through and it was just falling all on me. So I pulled over on this highway, y'all. It was so vulnerable and scary. I put my hazard lights on and I'm just like on the side of this highway. There's so many cars just driving by me and it was windy. It was windy. So not only is it just windy in general, but all the cars just like zooming by me. It was just causing so much like wind on me when I got out of my car. It was so dramatic. I felt like I was in Breaking Bad. I'm not kidding. I truly felt like Walter White in that moment. So I pull over, right? And I get out of my car. The wind is just like crashing into me. And I look at the top of my car, y'all. My entire sunroof is just shattered flat. What am I, what am I, what am I supposed to do right now? What the actual fuck just happened? What? How did that even happen? Obviously no one shot at me because there would be a bullet in my car, I would assume. Didn't see a bullet in my car. So how the hell did this even happen? I just wanna like think that someone shot at me cause that's kinda, it's not, it's really not cool. Please don't do that. But like, it's just like a cooler story, but I don't think that that's what happened. It's either I had a little crack in my sunroof already from a previous time, I don't know how. And since I was driving my car at a high velocity, like I was just driving for hours, like 12 hours is a lot. And with really high winds, I think that my sunroof just had enough and just boiled up and just expressed herself, which like, sure, I get, but like, why girl? Like, we were having such a fun, chill time. Like, why did you need to, like, explode? Are you on your period? <laughs> but, like, why did she just have to, like, have an outburst? While I'm on my chill drive, like, girl. We were listening to Bobby Caldwell. What you won't do, do for love. And I came back to let you know. that was to have shattered glass rain on you while you're shaking in fear pulling over to the side of a highway with this song in the background 
and I can't let it go. Like, that was so humiliating. Even though no one saw that, like no one knew what was going on. It was humiliating in my soul and for myself. You know what I mean? Did my sunroof just genuinely explode during this saxophone solo? Like this is not what I was expecting ever. So then as I'm outside of my car, trying to get as much shattered glass off of the top of my car without harming myself, while semi trucks are zooming past me and Bobby Caldwell is just playing in the background. It was such a weird vibe, you guys. It was so weird. I was like, okay, this is like as much shattered glass that I can get right now. I'm just gonna drive the rest of the way with my hood up so it just like doesn't hit my face, like the shattered glass. I was like, whatever, I feel like this will be fine. I open up my car door to get back into my car. And I guess while I was trying to shovel the shattered glass off of my car, a lot of it seeped through it even more. So there's just shattered glass all in my interior. All on my seats, the middle console, the cup holders, just shattered glass fucking everywhere. <laughs> So then I had to spend an extra like five minutes just shoveling shattered glass out of my car seat. Dude, it was so, it was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> well, this is in the background. So then I'm like, you know what, Sarah? Okay, you have two hours and 30 minutes left of your drive. Just get through this. And the entire two and a half hour drive, every two minutes, just glass ricocheting off of my skull and off of my shoulders. Also, because since my sunroof was shattered, there was no glass protecting the top of my car. So it was just my cover now. Since it was just this fabric, the wind was just... <laughs> because of the wind hitting the fabric. So I just like turned the music up as loud as I could just to drown out the because that shit drives me insane. I have sensory issues. Oh my God, this is, this is hell on earth. Um, and you're probably asking, Sarah, why wouldn't you call your parents? Why wouldn't you call someone? And the simple answer to that is, if you know Barbara Baska, She's going to have a conniption. Anything involved in my safety, anything involved with me in distress, oh, she will empathize. But turn up the notch times 10. Obviously, she's a mother. But with Barbara, she would be a nervous wreck. I knew in this circumstance, that would be a very bad idea. Sure, I could call my dad, but also I just didn't want to stress them out. And my logical brain was just saying, okay, Sarah, you're going to be okay. Just tell them when you see them. I just don't want my parents to be stressing out while I have three hours left in my drive. And I knew that I would be safe enough to get to my destination. It was annoying, the wobbling wind sound and the shattered glass falling on me but I had protection, I had my hood on, and I had my sunglasses on. And also, my plan was, instead of going to my parents' house right away, I was just gonna go straight to Katie's house and like celebrate her birthday the night before and then on the day of. So when I got into Medford, I was like, there's no way that I can just like go to Katie's house right now and like see her family. They were all really anticipating me being there and I was like, I literally cannot go there right away. I can't go to my parents' house right away because they're gonna see my car and they're gonna freak out, have all these questions. And I just don't wanna like think about this. I just need somewhere to decompress and I don't know where to go. I was feeling really claustrophobic in my car. I just needed to be alone somewhere in my own space, but I didn't have any of that. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna check into a hotel. Even though I'm not even gonna be staying the night there, which is like a really insane thing to say. That was one of my options. I was just weighing out all my options. So I go on Google and I type in hotels near me. And the first one that came up was the brand new hotel. Jimmy Buffett's hotel. This was before he died. And something in my spirit was like, oh my God, that's the one. That feels correct. I need some Margaritaville vibes. I check into this hotel, the lobby, there's like a restaurant and everyone's just like sipping margaritas. And like, it was just so chill. I was like, yes, 
and I just like go into my room, I collect myself a little bit. And then after a few hours, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go over there. So then I drive over to Katie's house. Everything's great, okay? We celebrated her birthday. It was so much fun. Happy birthday to you. Woo! One, two, three, cute. How do you feel? Old. <laughs> and young. But in Oregon, every single summer, there's wildfires off the charts, okay? So it's like always really smoky. It just kills the fantasy of summer, honestly. It's really annoying. So there was a bunch of wildfires in Oregon all summer. Everybody in Oregon was praying for rain. Katie's family was even talking to me about it. They were like, dude, we've been praying on our hands and knees for rain. That would cure everything. And I'm like, yeah, totally. But in my head, I was like, girl, it's not gonna rain. That's insane and that rhymed and y'all i'm not kidding we celebrated katie's birthday and then we wake up the next morning i'm groggy i'm tired i'm a mess i go upstairs into the living room and everyone is just like cheering <laughs> Katie's birthday was yesterday. And everyone looks at me and they're like, Sarah, it rained. <laughs> and I was like, yay. Woo. Yes, rain. Woo, woo, woo. Oregon represent. I care, you know, this is my home. If you guys are happy, I'm happy. And I get it, the wildfires suck. And as I was like chilling throughout the day, reality just thumped me because Katie's aunt was like, hey Katie, I'm gonna go run an errand. Are you parked behind me? Or something like that, like something to do with cars. And then I was like, cars, cars, rain. It rained a lot. Still raining outside. Sunroof, sunroof, sunroof. That I don't have. I don't have a sunroof. I don't have a sunroof. I don't have a glass over my car. All I have is this really thin piece of fabric. Holy shit. And it rained all night and all day. And it's 7 p.m. Oh my god. I immediately bolt up off the couch. I run outside. I unlock my car. <sighs> my interior soaked, dripping. My seats were soaked. My middle console was soaked. My fucking radio was soaked. All the buttons dripping wet. I almost started crying, but I didn't want to kill the vibe because it was Katie's birthday. But I was like, my car is fucking ruined. It was such a weird vibe because everybody was celebrating that it was raining. <laughs> like finally the wildfires are out. Finally, this is what Oregon needed. We're replenishing our land. And I'm over here like about to have a mental breakdown because my car is destroyed. And I didn't like want to show that, but it was just, I had the car door open, just like staring at the inside of my car, just like wanting to burst. I just wanted to burst. I just wanted to explode. Just like my sunroof did. I'm like, I get you girl. You had enough. I'm right with you. I'm right behind you. It was a lot. After a few minutes of like mourning my car, I'm like, Katie, I have to go. I like have to go see my parents. I'm having a lot of anxiety about this car. She was like, yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Thank God my car turned on. Like at least my car wasn't 100% ruined. The radio doesn't work though. Radio's not working. That's awesome. The screen doesn't work. Really cool. But I'm driving home, like just trying not to cry. And I pull up to my parents' house. Reminder, they don't even know that any of this happened yet. I walk into my parents' house and they're like, Sarah's here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey girl, hey girl, hey girl. A 
dogs are jumping on me. And I'm just like... And then I told him the story. My dad immediately like runs out to the car. And I'm like, dad, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. And my dad wasn't upset with me at all. He wasn't like mad. He was like, I'm just so happy that you're okay. Like, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, it's not like I did this. Thanks, dad. And he like hits up his BFF who like does cars. He's super old though. It's like 85. He's been in the hospital like multiple times. <laughs> he's like had multiple strokes, but he's still kicking. He's still working on cars. He gives my dad a discount. My dad was like, hey buddy, uh, we have a code red situation. My dad's old ass friend was like, bring her in, bring her in. So my dad hangs up the phone. He was like, I'll be back. As my dad was like going over to his friend's house to like get an estimate, me and my mom were just like trying to casually like sit on the couch, sip some wine and like catch up on life <laughs> and pretend like this didn't just happen. And then my dad comes walking in the door and he was like, he can fix it. And he comes up to me and we like fizz bump. And I'm like, so like how much is it gonna be? And he was like, it's not gonna be that much. He's got you. And I was like, wow, praise God. And honestly, the universe did me a solid for having this happen while I was going to Oregon. Because if this happened while I was in LA or like anywhere else, I would have to spend like thousands and thousands of dollars. I got the family friend discount, okay? But then he tells me that my car won't be ready for a while. So I had to like buy a plane ticket to go back to LA. So that was pretty annoying. Cause I was like, damn, like the one time that I wanted to drive to Oregon and drive back to LA and like enjoy the drive and enjoy the scenery like the universe is just like <laughs> let's humble Sarah today let's kick her down that'll be fun she thinks this is gonna be a chill road trip <laughs> <laughs> she'll see it's okay it's all right still blessed still thankful still grateful um annoying um. It's not the end of the world, you know what I mean? Then just like the next day I hung out with my mom. We went to the mall. It was kind of sad only because we went to the mall on a Saturday, which is like usually the most poppin' time to go to the mall. That's what me and my friends did when we were teenagers. And I went to the mall with my mom on a Saturday and it was dead. And I was like, oh my God, this is really sad. Like not even the teens come here to hang out and like meet up with their crush. You're holding hands for no reason, but like not talking at all the whole time. I'm like, there's none of that going on. Like what, where is everyone? It was kind of sad, but me and my mom still had a lot of fun. Me and my mom have been like trying to figure out like what we have in common. <laughs> Me and my mom have been slowly figuring out that we have a lot of music in common. My mom took me into this store in the mall and they had a bunch of old used records. I wanna say we spent like an hour and a half just going through these record bins, showing me all these like really cool records. I was showing her a lot of stuff that I like. She was like, you know that band? I was like, doy. And I was like, you know this band? She's like, doy. And I was like, what the hell, Barb? We actually have a lot in common. She was pulling out all these Van Halen albums and she was like, girl, you have no idea. Me and my girlfriends back in the 70s would be blessed in this in our little convertible on our way to the beach. And I'm like, yes, bitch. Every single record that she pulled out, she would have a story about it. And I was like, this is beautiful. I can't believe we've never done this before. She was like, should I buy this? This is crazy, but like this record means a lot to me. I'm like, do it girl. And so she like just kept buying all these records. It was so cute. So that was like a really cool breakthrough moment I had with my mom. We came back home and we like played the records on my little record player that I have in my old childhood room. And we were just listening to those records together. It was such a cute little wholesome time. And then after that, we just like sat in the living room, but I was like telling my parents the tea just about my really personal life. And then all of a sudden I get a text from Miss Caitlin Ray. And when I read this text, like my vision got blurry. All she says is, Jimmy Buffett died. Girl, what are you talking? Girl, no. No, we didn't. I was just at his hotel 
three days ago when I had a mental breakdown about my car. I was just at Margaritaville. What are you talking about? I am sitting in my parents' living room that is Margaritaville themed. And I was reading this in front of my parents who are huge Jimmy Buffett fans. And they obviously don't know the news yet. And I'm like, And my mom is like, Sarah, are you okay? What's going on? Cause like, I can't hide my dishevelment. And I was like, you guys, Jimmy Buffett just died. And they both just sit up and they're like, no. And my dad was like, what? And I was like, yeah, bro. Oh my God, I felt so bad for my parents. And I think that that was the last concert that they actually been to. Like they don't do that. Cause that's like the only person that they like truly care to like see in concert. Oh, it was so sad. It felt in a weird way, like kind of nice being with them during that. It was such weird timing though, because I was just at Jimmy Buffett's hotel. And then that happened a few days later. Universe, you're freaking me out. We like continued trying to like hang out and like talk about other things, but then we just like all went to bed and I was like, oh, this is so sad. And so then the next day, me and my dad hung out all day. We went to my favorite breakfast spot in Medford. It's Elmer's, but it's just like this cute little breakfast restaurant where old people go to. It's just like all old people. Cause there's like an awesome senior citizen special. Me and my dad just love that place. They have the best eggs, Benedict. I fucking love Elmer's. Great deep talks, just me and him. We had a great time. No stress, no sadness. It was great. But then we come back home and my mom is like crying on the couch. They were having a Jimmy Buffett tribute on the news where they were like having a parade in Key West and that's where Jimmy Buffett's from. And it was like full news coverage. Me and my dad walk in, we're like, hey mom. And she's just like, hey just watching the news, just talking about Jimmy. And I was like, totally. And we watched the Jimmy Buffett parade, all of us on the couch. All three of us were just like crying. I just can't believe he's gone, man. It was special to like go through those emotions with my parents, I don't know. But then finally, once they were done covering the parade, I was like, you guys, let's change the vibe up, okay? I leave tomorrow, let's go bowling. And my dad was like, yeah. And my mom was like, can't we just like go to a sushi restaurant? And I was like, nope, Barb, get your buttocks off the couch. We're going bowling. And she was like, oh. And I was like, Barb, this is what I want to do. I'm the guest. We're going to go bowling as a family. I don't give a fuck. And you have to bowl, Barb. You're bowling. She was like, I don't really want to. I can watch you and dad. No, Barb. You're getting out of your comfort zone. You're strapping on those bowling shoes. She's like, they're ugly. Yeah, they are ugly. But guess what? We're not ugly. We're beautiful people. It doesn't matter what shoes we're wearing. It doesn't matter who's staring. Because everyone's wearing those shoes also. We're all in this together. But guess what? We're all having fun. And that's what we all have in common. So get your ass up. Go double your socks. Maybe a third pair of socks if you're prone to blisters. And we're going bowling. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Let's go, team. Everybody up, everybody up. My dad's already up. My dad's already getting his socks. We're not just gonna sit at a restaurant and eat sushi. We're gonna go have fun because guess what? Guess what, Barb? Jimmy would want this. Cause it's fun. And Jimmy was all about having fun. So we're gonna have fun. And she was like, okay. So then before we go, me and my dad take a shot ski. Hey, here's the Jimmy. Rest in peace and paradise. Rest in paradise, Jimmy. And then my mom drove us, so don't get it twisted, okay? My mom was our DD. So me, my mom, and my dad, we pay for our little bowling sesh. We're gonna play three games. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna kick their ass, obviously. I have the most athleticism. I'm really good at bowling, okay? I also just like felt bad for my dad because I'm like, I'm gonna kick his ass. This is gonna hurt his ego a little bit. But then I was thinking about my mom and I was like, she's a goner, like she's gonna suck. We start our game. I'm up first. I hit a gutter ball my first time. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. You know what I'm saying? Second try, I got like seven pins. I'm like, okay, just warming up, y'all. Relax, relax. My mom goes up. She picks up her ball, acts like she doesn't know what she's doing. This is so rando. I like can't believe I'm doing this. She goes, so much focus, brings her arm back. 
and just releases straight down the middle. This bitch got a strike. Her first try. First bowl of the entire night. And my mom just turned around. She was like. <laughs> that was like, what? So random. Me and my dad were like, when the fuck were you going to tell us that you were this good at bowling? She was like, I don't know. Just... It was just luck. Okay. That was crazy. And then my dad goes up next. My dad's intimidated as fuck. My dad gets maybe like a six. Three quarters of the game, my mom is winning. My mom is just slaying. But then at the very end of the game, my dad somehow came up out of nowhere, like the underdog. I think it really got to my dad. He was like, I can't lose. This is so embarrassing. I still got it. I still got it. He just rose like a phoenix, came out of nowhere, spread his wings, and just... He just randomly won. And then my mom got second, and then I lost. I was like... You know, I literally wanted to go bowling because I kind of needed an ego boost. I thought that <laughs> going bowling with my parents would be like a fun, like silly casual slay on my part. Really fucking easy. I literally went into this thinking that I would be feeling bad for them and then they beat me. It was really embarrassing. It was so competitive. I was very impressed by my parents. I just did not think that they were gonna be that good. I haven't been bowling with my parents since like, what, third grade? So that was fun. I had lots of like great moments with my fam and it was really wholesome and sweet besides my car exploding. The next morning, I get to the airport at like five in the morning. I'm wearing my tie-dye hoodie with my hood on. I'm crusty, I smell bad, didn't even take a shower. I'm just not a functioning human being. My spirit and soul is not activated, okay? And because I had to get a last minute flight, this flight was not a nonstop flight to LA. I had a connecting flight. In this city where my connecting flight, there's this guy that I used to talk to. He like moved there and I know that. My biggest inconvenience is if I ever ran into him. He is the last person that I want to run into. So the fact that this was my connecting flight, I was already just like, ugh. I don't want to like be anywhere near this man. But I'm like, this is just my connecting flight in this airport. Like Sarah, fucking relax. You're being dramatic. And my flight lands in this city. It is seven in the morning. I'm disheveled. In fact, crust is in my eyes. So indeed, I am quite literally crusty. I have my sunglasses on, hood on, AirPods in, and everybody is deplaning the plane. I'm walking off of the plane, so tired. I'm just like really annoyed that this is like my connecting flight. I'm just like not home yet. And I walk into the actual airport, and as I'm walking by the boarding area, I see this man but I just see the back of this man. The back of this guy looked exactly like the guy that I was paranoid about running into. And he was waiting in the boarding area to board the plane that I just got off of. The same exact height as him, same clothes that he wears, same body physique. My eyes were like adjusting and I'm like, no dude, I'm just paranoid. I'm just tripping. That's not him. I'm not even fucking kidding, dude. Like pinky swear. This man moves his body to the left a little bit and now I see his side profile <laughs> that was him that was literally him that was him that was him I like looked away and I was like no that can't be him this is just my brain playing a trick on me but then I like looked back at him again and my eyes like adjusted again and I actually like saw more of his face I was like Oh my fucking God, that's him. And then I turned around to the other side to look at the screen at like where this plane that I just got off of, where that plane is going to next. And that plane was going to that guy's hometown. That's when I knew, holy fuck, that's him. <laughs> what? What? Like if I turned around and that screen said that it was going to like Albuquerque or 
fucking like New York or something. Okay, I'm just tripping. No, that plane was going to where he's from. Mm, that was him, that was him. And when I tell you the adrenaline that started coursing through my veins, bitch, that woke me up. Who needs coffee when you can see a guy that you used to talk to in an airport? My face was either white as a ghost or red as a pepper. Cause I didn't want him to see me. Because first of all, we ended on really awkward terms. <laughs> And it was over something so dumb. And I just like don't even know what I would say if I ever ran into him in person. Second of all, I looked like a barbarian. And I know you guys are gonna be like, Sarah, stop it. Don't say that about yourself. How could you ever say that about yourself? Shut up. I don't care. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. I looked ill. I looked reptilian. There was no life behind my eyes. I was feeling fugly. I was feeling fugly, okay? What makes you think that I would ever talk to a guy that I had history with in an airport while looking completely nauseating? And listen, I love myself. I think I'm amazing. I think I'm beautiful. This isn't about self-love. I love myself. I'm being real. In that moment, my appearance was stomach churning. I run into this man right when I step one foot into this airport. And I panicked so badly where I just saw this bathroom right in front of my vision where I just ran to the bathroom. My next plane boarded in like 30 minutes. So I had some time. So I was like, oh my God, I just like need to calm down somewhere. And I'm sitting in the bathroom stall, closing my eyes, breathing, just like trying to catch my breath. It was like on the verge of an anxiety attack, but I was just like, this man isn't worth an anxiety attack. So let's just like relax. And I was in there for like 15 minutes, but I was still just like on edge. It's giving that one story time that I did when I ran into my ex at the gym and I had to like walk by him and his girlfriend. It was like that. So I like got up and I'm like, whew, whew. I go and I walk to the bathroom sinks, still have my hood on and my glasses on. And in the corner of my eye, as I'm washing my hands in the mirror, in the reflection, this girl a few sinks down is like looking at me and I'm still like shaky y'all. And then this girl, I can like tell she's like, is that? I definitely stood out. I see her walking towards me and she like taps me on the shoulder and I was like, oh, hey. And I like take my AirPods out. She's a girly. She like watched my YouTube videos and she was just so excited. And like these bathrooms, the fluorescent lighting was so bright. And I felt bad cause like I had my sunglasses on while talking to her and I was like, I don't want to seem like a douchebag. So I took my sunglasses off so she could like see my face. But also I was like, oh my God, I literally have crust in my eyes and the fluorescent lighting is just hitting me heavily. She was so, so nice. But you guys, like my brain felt like scrambled eggs. I was looking at her in this bathroom and she was just like, oh my God, I love your videos. And I, could not form a sentence. I was still shaky. Like I was so frazzled. Like I was trying to talk to this girl and like be normal, but I kept like stuttering, tripping over my words. I didn't even know what I was saying. Girl, if you're watching this, I am so sorry if I came off like super disconnected or frazzled. I was just tripping over this man at the airport. And it was so funny cause she was like, can we take a picture? And I was like, yeah, of course. And her hands were all shaky while she was taking the picture. I usually am like, let me take it because I like know that they're shaken. I couldn't even ask if she wanted me to do that because I just know that I was gonna be just as shaky. Uh! And like after we were done taking the picture and my plane was going to board, but as I was walking out of the bathroom, I was like walking by that guy, but I had my hood on and I just like walked really fast past it. But all I was thinking in my head was just like, damn, I hope that she doesn't think that I'm like, <laughs> fucking crackhead. So if you're watching this girl, I love you. You're but yeah, and I saw Beyonce. And Beyonce, bitch, I don't even have to say it. It was the best show I've ever seen, like easily. And honestly, I wouldn't have seen that show if my car didn't explode. I was planning on driving home like a few days after the Beyonce show. I wasn't even considering going to the Beyonce show because I didn't think that I would be able to make it in time. But since I didn't have to drive home, I got to see the Beyonce show. So I think the universe, at the end of the day, the universe was just like, bitch, you're seeing Beyonce. And I hate that you drove to Oregon because that means that you can't see Beyonce. But you're gonna see Beyonce. You cannot miss this freaking show. I'm gonna make your sunroof explode. Heck.
If that's what it's gonna take for you to listen to me, that's what it's gonna take. But yeah, that's basically it. That was my trip to Oregon. It was a sweet dream and a beautiful nightmare. Like dead ass. Just so many like, to the lights on. Um, I need to go to bed. But this was like a fun little sleepover moment. So I think that the next video that you see of me is gonna be my Peru vlog. So that's not gonna be until probably like next month, like early October. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Love you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you after Peru.